and women undergoing the knife in Canada in advance of their weddings in the Middle East. This is known as virgin surgery, a procedure that reattaches the hymen to make women appear virgin-like. And it's happening in Canada. It's the kind of thing Canadians need to know. Chris Sims is joining us now from Ottawa. Hi, Chris. Hello, Charles. Thank you for inviting me. Let me just ask you a feeling question before we ask the substance question. As a woman, how did you feel when you heard that women were imposing this on themselves out of fear of having a rather difficult set of circumstances befall them? Well, I was at first quite shocked and then very sympathetic because I, I tried to imagine being so terrified and so desperate that uh, I would go to a clinic, you know, under disguise, you know, sometimes at night, you know, with only friends and a bunch of cash in my pocket to try to keep myself alive and to keep my family from shame. And it was by trying to empathize that I was able to actually talk uh, to some of these uh, young Muslim women uh, who had heard of the surgery, but who uh, said that they didn't need it. And uh, it was a surprising uh, story in that I started looking up these different plastic surgeries clinics in Toronto and Mississauga and to find that they specialize in something called hymenoplasty and that this is actually occurring here in Canada. It was surprising. All right, let, let's set the table on this. This has to do with the Middle East, it has to do with arranged marriage, and it has to be the demand uh, from the, uh, the male culture that the woman be a virgin and that the woman literally uh, bleed uh, during the first night of the honeymoon. Otherwise, the husband is suspicious uh, that this is not uh, what, what, what's been arranged for him. Is that, is that the crux of this? That's exactly it, uh, Charles. Basically, in, in this version of Islam, uh, the woman must bleed on her marital bed. The hymen must be intact. Uh, the family is usually involved in some way. Either the woman is checked, believe it or not, before the marriage, or they're found out afterwards. And basically, it goes for men and women usually. Both of them need to be pure before they are married. But it's the women who are able to be checked physically for things like this. And what's happening now is since we have such large populations uh, in Canada of uh, Muslim Canadians from these other countries, from Iraq, from Iran, uh, from Syria, from uh, Northern Africa, that sort of place, since we have such high concentrations, these, these young women are becoming westernized. Some of them might have had secret boyfriends. Some of them might just have torn their hymens by doing, you know, sports at school. Or some of them, even in one case, apparently had been molested. And so they didn't have this proof and then suddenly they're arranged to be married back in either their own country of origin or their parents country of origin possibly to a man they've never met and then they panic because they don't have this proof and they're scared that they are either going to be killed or that they're going to be severely punished and their families will be shamed forever and they seek out these plastic surgeons in Canada to have their hymens reattached or developed where none had existed before. All right, now, the fear is not irrational fear. Women in some of these countries, uh, you, you mentioned earlier today, I had you on our chorus radio show, uh, uh, Egypt and, and Iraq and Iran and, and, and Saudi Arabia. I think you also mentioned uh, Turkey. Uh, in these religious families with these arranged marriages, uh, there have been several incidents, it's not isolated, uh, that if the woman is not found to be pure on the wedding night, the husband can then kill her? or the husband's family and see technically they're not supposed to do that in these countries technically that's illegal however the women are often lashed if they're brought before an actual court of law uh, so to speak in their countries but when I was doing a bit of research just batting around this idea I wandered around Ottawa and approached you know groups of teenage Muslim girls or young women who are Muslim and I found a few people who were here from Qatar these three women are studying English here and I said what would happen if you know you you were, went to your marriage bed and were found to be impure in your home country. And she said, well, the family would kill you. It was instantaneous reaction and it was, it was a dramatic response and it surprised me, but none of the women around me were surprised by this. So yes, apparently this happens if one is found to be impure in some parts of this culture in these countries. All right, so it's, it's a matter of fact. It's not a matter of what some people think or how some people interpret reality. This is 
no matter how shocking it may be for us, clearly the way they're responding is not shocking to them. It's a part of real life in these countries. No, it was as if I'd asked them what, you know, parking meter fines were. They were just said, no, you'd, you'd probably be killed by your family. And of course, you're not supposed to be. The judge would say that you shouldn't happen, but it, should, they said it would happen, very easily happen. All right, the ethics of uh, virgin surgery, I think you talked to some of the Canadian uh, doctors about that and, and press them a bit on, on w what they're doing and, and why they're doing it. I did. And I said, you know, sir, with due respect, this gentleman, you know, the very highly regarded plastic surgeon in Toronto uh, from Greece originally, I said, sir, what do you think about the criticism that some would say that you're enabling this sort of practice of, you know, you must be a virgin, you must have your hymen torn, those sort of things that would shock, frankly, a lot of Western people. What would you say to the idea that you're enabling this? And he said, listen, I don't agree with them doing this sort of thing over there. He said, but I'm a doctor and I've got a 19, 20, 30 year old woman coming to my clinic saying, I've, I'm terrified, I'm scared that my family could kill me, I'm scared that my family will be shamed. This operation takes 30 minutes, he can do it, what are you supposed to do? And so he said, I make no apologies for doing this because ultimately, whether or not I agree with what ha happens over there, here, I could be saving a life. And that was his argument. Okay, Chris, if I could just get a quick answer to this. I'm wondering if any of these women try to do a, a Hollywood, and by that I mean in Hollywood, when we need to see blood, uh, generally they uh, get packets of, of blood. It comes from a sheep, sometimes from other animals. I'm just wondering if anyone's carrying a, carrying a packet uh, back home with them. That's a good question, and that does happen. There's actually a false hymen now that can be ordered online that looks like blood. And also there is a specialist surgeon in Los Angeles that specializes in not only reattaching the hymen, but actually inserting a capsule of red liquid next to the wall so that when it breaks, it looks like blood. Chris Sims, thank you very much for the great You're journalism welcome. as always. Thank you. Tough story. Chris Sims.